we can load it on any iOS device. Yo people, what's going on? Thanks for coming back to another episode of Aura Audio. And today I'm super excited because I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your own audio unit version 3. And we're not going to be doing this the ordinary way. Some of you may be familiar with Juice or other tools out there, but we're going to be using some other open source code that's one of my favorites. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new Xcode project for iOS, just an app. And we're going to call this whatever you want. So just my audio unit, because I can't think of a better name. Um, then we're going to do storyboard UI kit, just because I don't feel in the mood for Swift UI today, but we may do that in a future video. And next thing you want to do is go ahead and cl click that plus icon right there and add an audio unit extension. And this you can name also whatever you want, uh, whatever you want your audio unit to be named. And the language we're going to do Swift and we're making an effect. And that right there is the manufacturer code. So that can also be whatever you want. Um, just four letters, one uppercase and subtype is kind of the same, but all lowercase. And I'm just going to go ahead and click that Mac checkbox because I want this to build on my Mac as well. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the Swift package manager, add a new package. And this is going to be our wonderful open source code from audio kit. So go ahead and type audio kit and then Soundpipe audio kit is the specific module we're going to be using today. And once we got that in, I'm going to go ahead and use the developed version since we're just messing around. But if it was an app that I was releasing, I would use the main version for production. And you're going to go ahead and select your audio unit as the target. Now, once that's done, go ahead and open this audio unit folder and delete all the files you don't need. So we don't need the DSP. We don't need the helpers or any of that. All we need is the audio unit view controller and you'll see it in there. And we also don't need that bridging header, any of that stuff, because it's complicated stuff we're not going to worry about right now. So once you're done deleting everything, your files should look like this. All you should have are those files. But now what we're going to do is go to the build settings just like that in your target and delete the bridging header from the build settings, because then that will eliminate problems. So next, we're going to go into the audio unit view controller file, and we're going to import our open source code. So import audio kit and then import um, audio toolbox as well above the audio kit, that's important. And then sound pipe audio kit as well. And next we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this function here in the way bottom, it's called create audio unit and this is our audio unit factory function. You're just gonna delete that line of code there so it just says return. Now we're gonna go ahead and build our audio unit and you can load it in either GarageBand or Logic Pro or any other DAW that supports it. And this will load it inside kind of a debug mode. But the problem is you'll notice something. What you'll notice is that if you wait even on the longest time, it will never load because our audio unit view controller is having trouble finding our audio unit. We never created it. And that's what the factory function is for. So say when you buy a guitar pedal or some other sort of effect from the store. It's got to be made in a factory, right? Or some sort of manufacturer. Well, that's what the factory function does. It puts our audio unit together and returns it to the view controller, but we haven't properly returned it yet because we deleted some code. The easiest way to create an audio unit is to use an audio kit node. And the audio kit nodes are basically like our guitar pedal. Audio goes in to the node and it comes out as processed audio. So there's tons of cool effects we can use, such as distortion, reverb, chorus, any effect you want. So all we have to do is inside the create audio unit, our factory function, we just have to add a couple lines of code. First one, I'm going to add a mixer, which normally acts as the input to our distortion node, but we don't have an input, so it's just going to be a blank mixer. And then I'm going to do the tan H distortion for our guitar, or something, whatever instrument. Um, and then we get the distortions node, we get that audio unit of the node and assign it to our audio unit. So now we actually have an audio unit, which we can load in GarageBand, which I think is pretty cool. So once you load up GarageBand through the debugger, 
I always like to remove any plugins that are in my project first, just so I can test the plugin we developed alone. And I always like to turn down my volume as well, just in case I really don't want to blow up my speakers or hurt my ears. And this right here is the debug window. You'll see your plugins process once it loads. And if it isn't shown, you can go to the view debug area and activate console. All right, so there it is. There's our plugins process. Everything's getting loaded up. Just give it a couple more seconds here and there's our view controller. And we can go to the controls of the plugin. And once your level looks good up in the upper right hand corner, then we can go ahead and play it. It's a little bit loud, sorry about that. And the cool thing, of course, is that this is an audio unit version 3, which means we can load it on any iOS device. So next we're gonna wrap up with some customization. So if you go into this info.plist file of the audio unit, you can actually change its name. So I could change it to literally anything I wanted. So manufacturer, let's make my manufacturer name LOL, <laughs> just because I don't have anything else better. And then the plugin is gonna be called Hello World. So with that syntax, you wanna make sure you have the colon in between and that indicates that kind of LOL is Hello World is under LOL as a manufacturer. Um, so yep, pretty programmer meme, meme-ish, I guess. You know, the good old Hello World. So yeah, now if we go ahead and look for our plugin, it's gonna be under LOL and then Hello World. Man, that is a tongue twister. All right. And next thing we can do is we can go back into the view controller code and inside this view, did load super dot view did load after that we can change the background color of the plugin so i don't know why i chose this color it's my favorite color i guess it doesn't look that great but the point is you can customize it however you want so yeah now if we build this again guess what color it's gonna be oh my gosh it's yellow this is just the beginning of exploring how audio units work. You can have so much fun, so many hours, customizing your audio unit to your liking. So, so far we've figured out how an audio unit is sort of created at the high level. And we've also figured out how to customize our audio unit a little bit. Where we're gonna go with this is right now, our audio unit doesn't have a very creative way to control the parameters. I mean, sure, you can use your trackpad or your fingers on the iPad, but that's not as fun. What if, say, we take advantage of the device's accelerometer so when I turn my device, then it will control the parameters? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do in the next video. But for now, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and like it, comment below what you think, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.